Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this video I present a model of the B-58 Hustler which I made in Blender uh, for Kerbal Space Program. And it does not include the control surfaces here. These are actually B-9 procedural control surfaces and so is that. And it also doesn't include the jet engine. This is um, made by advanced gen engines modified from a stock engine I believe or maybe a B-9 engine. Let's take a look. Uh, it just says AJE, so I can't really tell which mod the physical engine is from. Uh, technically, the correct engine for the B-58 Hustler is a GE-5, not a GE-17. It is a J-79, but uh, this one is actually supposed to be for the F-4 Phantom. Uh, it has a little bit more thrust than the one for the B-58 Hustler would have. Um, we also have the stock landing gear. Other than that, we have the body, uh, wings, uh, vertical stabilizer, and the engine pods. Those I did model. And the shininess is thanks to Textures Unlimited, of course. This is probably the best texture job I've done for a plane so far. Certainly better than what I did for the Valkyrie. And let's see how it goes. I have not landed it yet. I've tried taking off. I have taken off with it. But it's not great at taking off right now to be honest and I'm not a hundred percent sure why let's not do after ooh yeah whenever I try to do afterburning it also wants to sort of tilt up just pushing down on the um, stick helps and then it still has the wobbliness as far as wanting to go off to one side uh, and so I need to use Oh, it's doing the skid thing. It's doing the skid thing. Uh, uh, can I stop that? No, come on. If I figure that out ever, I'll tell you. Anyway, I'm trying to pull up here. It's already going past 200 knots. So it really should be able to get up by now. We are climbing. But obviously the climb happened a lot later than it ought to. And you can see uh, it's using quite a lot of pitch right now. At least it's climbing and accelerating at the same time. But this is not its full load. It uh, is capable of carrying a belly tank or belly munitions. And right now I don't think it could. It's at 55 tons right now. This model is made for realism overhaul. I haven't tested it in stock. Um, I would imagine with the stock engines it would perform even better than with these because these are only operating at 54 kilonewtons right now. Uh, the Panthers do much more than that. So, But of course I could throttle up and get the afterburners on. And now we got 72 kilonewtons still. Uh, there are many stock engines capable of much more than that and still able to fit on the engine pods. Obviously, the engine pods have the intakes built in. After this flight test, I'll go into the VAB and show you how to put it together. And of course, uh, the model will be in the video description. Now, I made this uh, basically at the request of a Twitch viewer, Aaronim, and. He wanted me to fly it from New York to London, and oh, I I don't think that's feasible, at least with the time I have. But first of all, we we are having trouble getting off the ground with just this load, and it'll need the belly tank to get that kind of range. Also, it can only have that kind of range in non-supersonic speeds, non-afterburning, and I don't have that kind of patience, so. I do actually have a runway at JFK and at London in this uh, install. That's why it's my airplane install. I've got JFK International Airport there. And um, somewhere around I've got Heathrow. Uh, it can show up. I don't know why it's not showing up, but it should be there somewhere. Maybe. Well, no idea. You can see we're still using quite a lot of pitch here. At least it's stable. I'm using atmospheric autopilot, so there is that. Can turn that off and see what SAS does. 
SAS is probably inevitably more twitchy and hard to control with this. Yeah. I can sorta get it stable, let's see. Uh, no, it still wants to roll back and forth. I'll just use Atmospheric Autopilot, it's better. I swear I had it accelerating a bit better earlier. Uh, let me just get level here. I think one of, a tweak I did to the wings to increase the lift might have also increased drag as you know the two go together. So I increased the lift but it increased drag as well and now it's probably too much. And it's stuck in a transonic region. I'll revert that and it should be able to break the sound barrier much more convincingly once I put the version in the video description. So I'm literally editing the configuration file now. It might make it a little bit harder to get off the ground though. As far as I've seen, not a whole lot different. Technically it's supposed to have a max speed of Mach 2.0 or 1146 kilonewton uh, knots, sorry not kilonewtons, knots. Um, about double what we're going now but its cruise speed is 530 knots or basically where we're at now or a little bit less I think it's stuck in the transonic region right now though and that's mainly because of how much these are def needing to deflect well we're past 400 on a dive That's Orlando over there, or what I have of it. Uh, well, if we go up, we lose speed. It was only in the dive we got to that speed. All right, still need to work on it. I don't think we can do much more with that. As usual, with trying to make planes in Kerbal, real planes, it seems like it's tough to get them off the ground at the speed they're supposed to be off the ground. And it is tough getting them to go as fast as they ought to. Inevitably, there are numbers that work. I mean, barely. But there's, it's not as easy as it ought to be, that's for sure. It very much loses speed rather quickly when the engines are idle, though, even though we're descending. I don't have any air brakes on here, though, so I, I appreciate it being able to slow down. Ooh, it really doesn't want to turn right now, though. That's a bit of a problem. And let's not talk about pulling up, either. It's not doing that particularly well. I don't know what kind of speed this needs to land at, considering how it took off. Seems like it'll need to be pretty quick. I did just use the um, Mach 2 cockpit for the IVA view, so I mean that works pretty well, more or less. Um, I don't know why raster prop monitor isn't working though. That's strange. We'll need to pre-apply the brakes, I think. <laughs> I wonder what's over on the other runway. Oh, the boomerang figures. I can barely pull up at all. So I'm having trouble slowing down here. Well, we're gonna try landing at extreme speeds I think. Yeah, come on, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Ooh. Okay. You can touch down again. 
Well, there goes all that thrust. Well, it's technically still on, you can see by the kerosene consumption. But are we gonna have enough runway? No. <laughs> no, we're not. Is it flat past the runway? The collider on this uh, shuttle landing facility section is always a little bit weird, as you can see. It would have worked in like Edwards Air Force Base or something. Okay, at least we're not in a million pieces. That's good. Or skidding to the left or right. That's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, let's go to the SPH and I'll just show you how to put it together. Now, as you can see, it does have some tilt to the wing. Uh, it has anhedral, not dihedral, incidentally. That might cause us problems, but that's how it is. Uh, if you wanted to adjust the wings, what I need to point out is that they're not on in symmetry, obviously, otherwise the um, images, the decals, if you will, would not be on properly. Uh, let me just go new and B58 is what you need to type, B-58. And then we've got the body and then uh, right wing. And you can see the nodes here. And so this right wing goes on that node. The left wing goes on that node, and you can see the body has the nodes for the engines because um, you might want to use a different wing. After all, we see that this wing isn't uh, performing very well. Maybe you would like to try a B9 procedural wing. Uh, it won't look as good, obviously, but ultimately we are using the B9 procedural control surfaces, which you'll have to figure out how to put on yourself. Uh, the vertical stabilizer, obviously, is back there. And again, the rudder will need to be placed using B9 procedural parts or whatever other uh, control surfaces you have. And then each engine mount is separate because they're subtly different. And so inner left is on here. Um, the inner right is on here. The center mass on these, uh, we, uh, well, we can take a look later, but I uh, think I've shifted it down, hopefully enough. Uh, otherwise, the center mass will be right where the node is because the node happens to be at the zero zero point outer right and outer left so there they are you can see looking very nice in my humble opinion and to find the engine of course j79 and that's this turbojet each of the engine nacelles has a node for the jet engine and the uh, you know, I just made it according to the blueprints and it so happens that this jet engine that comes with advanced jet engine is the right size. <laughs> it fits perfectly. So no problems there. Glad to see that it did fit perfectly and wasn't too small or too big or anything. And that's, that's it except for the control surfaces and the landing gear. The landing gear is pretty far forward, but you can tweak that. Um, this is what the center mass and center lift look like. Without the control surfaces, the control surfaces will bring the center of lift a bit further back. So you might feel like it's too nose heavy. That might be a thing. Uh, if so, adding more, oops, let me just go over the parts as far as their individual center of mass and center of lift. Because if you're going to use this, uh, some tweaking may be involved. Um, you can see that the body, because of its uh, sharp nose, this, it causes a lot of lift in the front doesn't have a whole lot of lift in the back um, so that the center of lift is right there the center of mass is over here which I think is about right for this particular part the cockpit's gonna be pretty heavy and uh, meanwhile the engine nacelles uh, for the center of mass about there and you know could go either way with that you know uh, this is not including the engine the nacelle itself is fairly light 0.45 tons the engine is 1.74 tons, which is correct. That's what Wikipedia says for it. So yeah, this this part isn't particularly heavy. The wings um, have a lot of fuel in. Uh, this is the maximum fuel load for the internal fuel for the B-58. The Both wings combined have that load. So you might want to tone down on how much fuel you're carrying in those. Uh, you can see the center mass and center lift for the wing is like that. 
and it doesn't matter what kind of fuel it has in it. If you take a look at the plane otherwise, as we dump fuel, uh, so center of mass and center of lift, as we dump fuel, the center of mass goes forward. But so does the center of lift a bit. But that's the difference. It's not a huge amount. Okay, so I'll link the parts in the video description and you can make what you will of them. I'll try and tweak them more and uh, help the situation out a bit. And if I come up with substantial improvements, I'll make another video on it. It sure looks good enough to warrant a few videos, so I don't know. Um, if it's fun to fly, that if I make it a little bit more fun to fly, I'll be pleased to show it off again. Anyway. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.